<laughs> hey, Dad! Heads up! Son, I believe sports may not be your thing. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Player Display. This time, we're doing kind of half a review and half of a customizer showcase because we are looking at things that I have actually not produced. I obtained everything here from an eBay seller, and they are all, as you can probably tell, 3D printed goods, uh, third party, of course, and all of them are really excellent. I purchased a few of these, and I also got some freebies along with them, and every single one of them that I've worked with thus far are remarkable, really good quality quality. Mostly when I've gotten 3D printed goods online, they usually have like, you know, those really ugly looking layers that you can very visibly make out that makes up the full sculpt. But in here, there's basically no seam lines whatsoever. Everything here looks like a very beautiful canvas I can't wait to start painting up. So anyways, because these were done so nicely, I really wanted to do a video on them. Uh, this is not sponsored or anything. They're just so nice quality that I thought that these goods, along with the seller, deserve some attention. So if you want to pick up anything like this and beyond, go ahead and check out a link to their shop in the below description. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop right into this. Zooming in, here we are with our first head sculpt being an ISB helmet from, of course, Star Wars Battlefront 2, but I think it first debuted in the Star Wars Rebel show. And this, of course, was worn primarily by Agent Callus, who, of course, had his redemption arc later on in the show. And I have to say, this is a very beautifully sculpted design. As you can probably tell as I'm rotating it around, it's going to require very, very minimal sand work or exacto knife blade work to get things cleaned up. Like, really the only thing I think needs to be cleaned up here is this back groove on this plate back here. But other than that, it's just magnificently sculpted. I love this detail work so much. And even if you turn it down to the bottom, you can actually make out a little bit of Callus's beard, which is very nice, along with his chin. But honestly, you can make this into any generic ISB agent that you would prefer. Um, I could see you just slapping this onto like um, an officer body or something like that. Even on a stormtrooper, I think it would look pretty cool. Um, as for the bottom of it, it's totally hollowed out, so maybe you could fit in a certain head sculpt into there, or you could customize a joint that's coming out. As you look at the rest of the head sculpts that we have over here, you'll see that there is a lot of real, free real estate in there, so you could pretty much install whatever joint you like, so it's good that the seller kind of left open that option for you. Like, you got the little buttons over there, got a really cool looking, almost Mandalorian looking visor, this little grill, very reminiscent of Vader. Speaking of Vader, we're gonna have a lot to talk about <laughs> in this review here, but yeah, it's got those little holes in the plate work on the front and on the back. Everything here is just really excellent. Beautiful piece. Next, we have our first of two Vader helmets. This is, of course, the Star Wars Rebels version once again, and this looks absolutely phenomenal. It looks like it was taken right out of the cartoon, and of course, this was more heavily inspired by the McCory artwork, which we will be talking about when we are done with this particular head sculpt. But as you can see, everything's a little bit more oblong than we're used to um, in the live-action versions of Vader that we've been seeing as of late and as of the original films, but yeah, you got the classic samurai-looking Vader helmet, and then in the front you have the longer-looking droopy face, again more stylized as is the rest of the cartoon. You got the big old eyes, um, I like you have a lot of access there, so if you wanted to spray paint this black, give it some gloss, then you can go into the eyes, give it a brown or a red, whatever it is that you prefer, then do a little bit of silver work at the, I guess, uh, jaw notches, and then a little bit on the nose, and there you go, you'd have a very good looking Vader. By the way, when we're done looking at each one of these pieces, we will be doing some comparisons with the actual vanilla figures that we've gotten from Black Series to see how they match up. Next, we have probably my favorite in this whole lot I have. This is the Ralph McQuarrie inspired Vader helmet. Now, of course, we did in the past, one of my earliest reviews was on the Disney Parks exclusive um, Vader and Obi-Wan as inspired by the Ralph McQuarrie concept art. And Vader had a lot of different types of helmets. The one that they went with, uh, Black Series anyways, was the more mean and aggressive one. Um, I, I guess I like them in equal measure, but this one I really love a lot too. This is the one that's a little bit more nostalgic for me. I kind of told you before how I really love the 
2007 30th anniversary um, 3.75 inch scale figures and they did a whole Macquarie line and this is one of the helmets that you had. Actually that figure had both helmets. Yeah you can kind of see how this design kind of funneled into this one over here. In fact if I go ahead here we have, um, let's get the saber out of the way, here we have the official released um, Macquarie helmet. So as you can see on the left and the right we have the Macquarie influenced Vader helmets. Then in the middle you can kind of see it draws more inspiration from the more angry looking helmet when it came to developing the Rebels aesthetic. So I really like these helmets. I think they're going to be very fun to interchange between the Black Series, Model Kits, um, Mafex, Figuarts, whatever you like. They're just really nice options to have. Alaska. The last head sculpt we have here actually threw me for a loop. This is one of the freebies that I got, and obviously it's a, a lot more shiny and pretty than the rest of them, and I couldn't really figure out why. Um, when I first saw this helmet, my first impression was, oh, it's a phase two purge trooper from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. But then I kind of, you know, went back into that old archive in the back of my mind from before Disney, <laughs> uh, when Star Wars was still, you know, overall pretty good. And then I remembered, no, this is actually the Imperial Navy Stormtrooper Commando from the Force Unleashed games. And it's sculpted very well. It's immaculate going all the way around. Um, I think the reason why perhaps this is molded in a silver as opposed to being 3D sculpted with that slate gray we've been seeing with the rest of these sculpts here is I guess that when you go ahead and spray it over with a white or whatever to make it more accurate to the game, then if you want to do any weathering, it'll be kind of nice to have kind of that scoring. So like, I guess you could get a little toothpick, um, scratch away some of the white, then you have some of the silver underneath to give him a little bit of battle damage. So really nice that we have options here. And over here, this is a piece I never expected to have in my collection. This is um, more of a Grand Admiral Thrawn thing. This is definitely more part of the Expanded Universe line, very similarly to that uh, Navy helmet we just looked at. This is, uh, I keep forgetting the name of it, but it's a creature that was used predominantly in the novels and comics, mostly with Grand Admiral Thrawn. And this is basically a force-resistant alien where you wear it around your neck and force users basically can't affect you anymore, which is kind of interesting. So I look forward to painting this guy up. You know me, I love my little critters to go with the Black Series line. Over here we have the smallest accessory being this little Mandalorian shoulder pauldron. So of course my instinct was, ah, Din Djarin. We want to put this on our Mandalorian buddy that you've been following for three seasons. But then I put it next to the Mandalorian and I realized, wait a minute, it's too small. And I remembered in season three, Bo-Katan, she loses one of her shoulder pads and then the armorer makes her this new one. We've got Black Series Bo-Katan here on my desk and we will be seeing how this could be applied. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to do it yet, but for for sure, I'm going to be putting this on my Bo-Katan. I think it's just going to help to give her a little bit of asymmetry. It'll be nice to add a little bit of silver flavor to her design. And of course, you've already know this, noticed this by now, but the last piece we have to look at, and arguably the most fun, is Cad Bane's best pal, Total 360, who looks really well sculpted and articulated. Um, of course, if you have been keeping up with the releases and stuff like that, there are at least two versions of the Clone Wars variant of Cad Bane. Um, uh, there was a standalone release, and then there was a Comic-Con exclusive that came with Total 360, which of course I do not have because that thing is so freaking expensive. So I saw this guy listed on eBay, and I needed him, especially because I do kind of want to pair him with the old man Cad Bane that we get in the Book of Boba Fett. I think that would be really cool to have them side by side to see the contrast from live action to animated. This is the only piece here that you actually need to assemble. As you can see, it just remove the head so that can swivel however you like. Um, there's also some tips in the product description of how to tighten up any joints if you wish, but really the head's the only thing that you feel like you need to tighten up. Everything else moves beautifully. It won't take everything apart, but you can see that the arms, uh, it's just a simple little axle right there. They plug into the side. Um, sorry, it's a little hard looking through the camera and doing it, but yeah, they can swivel up and down. Uh, this one's a little bit tighter than this one, so do be careful. I mean, 3D prints are not always going to be exactly perfect. You're going to need to tweak them a little bit more to be to your liking, but you also have a little bit of a swivel there at the waist, and then I really love how this pelvis is kind of shaped. It's sort of this um, 
half dome, I suppose. And then one of the most interesting things is that you can remove the legs, and not only do they have a ball joint that goes into a socket, but if you remove his standing legs, you also have the option to add these rolling legs. So I believe I have these oriented correctly, where you can plug them together, and I actually can't recall um, in the show when he did this, but he puts his feet together, and then he kind of wheels around, kind of like that uh, <laughs> that long-forgotten child's favorite of mine, uh, the Robots movie from uh, uh, Blue Sky Productions. Does anyone remember that? I really miss robots. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, you got that option to have him rolling around if you'd like, looking really good. Total, you idiot. Where's my hat? Um, do not concern yourself, sir. Last feature here that I want to mention is that in the back, if you want him flying, you have a little bit of a porthole. Um, I don't have a good stand to go with him, but that kind of gives you an idea. What I'm most likely going to do is use, um, um, as I mentioned before, whenever I do model kits, I like to save the sprues, like just those lengths of acrylic rod, and then hopefully one of them is thick enough to accommodate for that hole, maybe perhaps a clear one more ideally, and then that would help him to suspend in the air like he's flying alongside Cad Bane. Speaking of Cad Bane, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons and part swaps. So I guess I'll start with these three over here. So of course we have Cad Bane with Toto 360 to start, and the scale is absolutely perfect. Of course, again, I do not have the Black Series release of Toto to compare them with, but from what I can gather, it seems like the scale is just right. And I don't know if the articulation is improved from the initial release or not, but he is a really good shoe, and I guess perhaps the only way he could be improved is maybe if he had alternate arms, because obviously you can't articulate the elbows, that'd be very difficult to do, but it would be interesting if you could, like, switch out the arms or something like that, so maybe he could be gesturing a little bit more because he's always surprised or just impatient, <laughs> pretty much. And over here, we have Luke with that, again, that Legends Lizard whose name I keep forgetting. I would have reminded you in the, in the bottom here at some point of what it's called, but yeah, it just wraps around any old Black Series neck, not an issue. So now we have young farm boy Luke who is totally force-proof, I suppose. And then lastly, we have Bo-Katan, where of course we have to look at the smallest pieces we've had a peek at, which is the Mythosaur shoulder pauldron. But yeah, I've kind of just been experimenting, I believe it goes on this shoulder, with kind of how it would form fit. It form fits very well. I feel like what you could do is just glue it right on and then paint the blue rim silver and then everything would match up just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and check some reference images. Maybe I'd want to sand down the blue portion first. Um, oh, see it popped right off. But yeah, you're going to want to paint the silver, glue it on, maybe do some sanding first and then put it on there. I'm going to think about how to do that. I'm not sure how I'll do it, but it's definitely going to get done. I think it's going to look very cool, especially if you pair her up with Darksaber, maybe from Gideon or something, and that would look pretty spectacular. Now let's draw our focus on the Chosen One as we have a look at our two alternate versions of Darth Vader helmet. So I guess we'll start with the Rebels one, and I guess before we hop into this, it is worth saying that um, their enjoyment is really going to be determined by which base body version of Vader you're going to be using, because we have seen him released a number of times, he's been re-engineered and retooled, and that being said, that means he's had different neck joints along the way. So, this is the Kenobi Show variant of Vader, and it's a really big ball joint underneath. I don't want to shortchange you, let me go ahead and put in the effort to pull this head off. Yeah, actually not as difficult as it was before. You can kind of see, it looks like... It's a dumbbell joint, so I guess what you could do is heat this up, take that ball joint and pop it in here, and then you should be able to pop this head on top of there, and then look at that, that's actually pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. So I'm probably going to paint this up, and then I'll have like two interchangeable options. I'll have to think about that, um, workshop it a little bit, you know? I guess we'll go ahead and leave that there as we move on to our Macquarie Vader, where, again, it's re-engineered here, so instead of just having that big uh, dumbbell joint in there, you pop this off a lot easier, and then you have this new kind of three-piece system. You got the ball joint, 
then you have kind of the cylinder, then you have an additional ball joint up underneath the head. So that's a lot easier to remove as we go ahead and drop on that alternate Macquarie portrait. And you can literally just drop that right on. You don't even need to put a joint in there, but that looks really good. I honestly, I get a lot more nostalgia from this look. All he's gonna need is some more paint. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do some spray or whatever, but uh, or do just manual acrylics, but I'm definitely going to hit him with a gloss coat and also hand paint in the eyes and then the two little jaw bits right there with some silver. But yeah, I love these head sculpts a lot. They're beautiful. Can't wait to see what I can do with them. And another note, I guess I will suggest what I was thinking when it comes to actually creating a joint for this Quarry Vader helmet to go on this body. Um, I was thinking maybe I can get some, like a hot glue gun, fill in this little hole here and stick in like a spare Bandai ball joint or something that is compatible here. So then you can kind of picture it clicking on, but I'll think about that. Again, it might just be enough to get a little bit of tack or putty, then shove it on, it'll be a swivel. I still have a little bit of down and up movement from this base neck, right? So different options there. And also it's a good helmet to get if you cannot find this in the official Macquarie Vader, which is very hard to get unless you're actually at the park. So if you want to just custom make your Macquarie Vader straight up with a generic base body like this Kenobi version that we have over here, then this is a good way to go. Just get a generic Vader, get this helmet, some paint, you should be good to go. I actually have to <laughs> move my cam down a little bit because I always forget that Vader is a little bit taller than everybody else. But here we have two Stormtroopers. We have the Black Series Mike uh, because I don't know what base body would be better for the Navy Trooper. And then we also have a Bandai Model Kit Stormtrooper over here on the right. So if you wanted to create a proper Navy Trooper, I'd suspect, judging by the images, it was kind of a combination between the Snow Trooper and the Scout Trooper, um, neither of which I actually have, unfortunately. So, for the sake of just experimenting, let me see what's going on down here. Yeah, it looks like you got a ball joint. Let me see if I could pop that off. No, I'm not liking that too much. So, uh, just for scaling reasons, here he is with Mike, which for the most part has the basic Black Series re-engineered Stormtrooper body. But you can see the size is just right if you just want to slap this onto a Black Series Stormtrooper. But... Usually when it comes to the more generic ones, I opt for the model kits, which is why I have one here. But we can go ahead and pop, well, this head off. And then there's probably going to be an ablation problem. Like you can see I dropped it on. It definitely <laughs> slumps down a little bit. So you might want to get some custom fodder pieces, re-engineer him a little bit on the inside. He got plenty of room in there. So yeah, if you can figure out a way to get sort of a socket in there, like a spare Bandai piece or something like that, and get the super glue as I suggested, then you could probably get a little bit higher, like just to about there, and that the proportions are pretty nice, like if I hold it from the back, you should be able to get a better image. Yeah, I could definitely see that working, but again, probably just going to have this as its own display piece, because I don't want to destroy that beautiful silver sheen, I just love it a lot as is. And then, of course, they never release an official ISB agent, but to wrap this up, here we are with that. Once more, hollow on the inside, so do whatever you want on, in there. But if you just want to port this onto a Stormtrooper body for whatever reason, uh, you could probably do that. It looks a little bit smaller because the agents are a little bit more slender than the troopers, but yeah, that could also be done. I'd see no reason why you couldn't. And that's about all for these 3D printed goods. I just think they are really excellent quality. I haven't purchased a whole lot of 3D printed parts for Black Series in the past, but when I have, again, they've been very rugged, they've had this really ugly texture to them, and any work of sanding and painting just didn't really make any difference for me. But these ones out of the packaging, they're just so smooth and nice. Um, I don't know, maybe some of them are injection molded. Perhaps a Navy Stormtrooper helmet is, but all of them are great. Again, it's really going to come down to how you'd like to customize these. Like for Toto 360, be careful with the joints. You don't want to break anything. Um, but once you learn where the joints are and you paint them up the way you like, I think he's going to be an excellent display piece, especially since you also have the alternate rolling feet, and then you also have that hole in the back of the head so you can suspend him in the air. So he has a lot of options going for him, perhaps more than the official release. As for all the helmets that we've looked at, it's really nice that they have a lot of space on the inside, so you can plant them onto whatever base body you prefer. 
for that Bo-Katan shoulder pauldron, uh, you, you could pretty much go any way you like. Again, I'm probably just going to do some sanding and some painting and some glue. That's it. I think it's really just that easy. And then lastly, we have that little lizard thing, which whose name I'm just never going to remember. And it's a nice little bonus from Legends, which I really appreciate. Again, like those little critters. <laughs> and speaking of critters, you can get them around Muck Muck if you like. Oh, after all these years of abuse, I finally have a counterpart. Counterpart, go to hell! Again, link for the seller in the description. He was very cooperative and very generous with all the little bonuses that he's given to me. And they're a lot of fun. I really highly recommend them. Uh, pretty well priced compared to other options that you have out there. But of all the 3D printed things I've gotten, again, these are the most high quality, most well priced. They're nice and smooth. Everything's contoured just right. Ah, no issues here. I mean, it's got to tweak them a little bit give them the paint, figure out the joint work. Once you do that, I think you're going to have a blast. They're a lot of fun. So please pick some of them up. Again, this is just me speaking from my own opinion on these. I just did this video because I wanted to do it, not because I was asked to. I just think that they're worth attention. And if you were looking for an alternate Toto 360 because the Comic-Con exclusive version is way hard to get, or perhaps you want to cobble together your own Macquarie figure and you're just not able to get in the parks at the moment or pay the scalper prices, then these are just some really good alternate options for you. So all of them great across the board. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you you enjoyed this review and you enjoyed this guy's products, then please, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, anger, a dark lord of the Sith. Thank you guys very much. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. Rock on, and I will see you all later. With the Mudhorns signet, or whatever you'd like to call it. Have I been calling it the Mudhorn on accident? It's the Mythosaur. I apologize if I messed up before. I guess I'm wondering now, if a Force user wears one of those lizards, does that mean they're unable to use the Force themselves? Or is it just that it's like a one-way mirror where the Force can't get to them, but they themselves can use the Force? Because we did see a comic release version of Luke wearing one of these, so I don't know what the relationship is there, but regardless, it's a really cool piece, and again, I love my little critters to add to this collection here. I'll take any I can get, drop them in any display, and they look like a lot of fun. Maybe I'll do like a little black series zoo or something along the way. <laughs>